Hello guys, welcome to Zip Code, and today we are looking at another couple code. We are dealing with how to recreate a YouTube clone or to create a streaming um, web application using Spring Boot and Angular TypeScript. So essentially what we want to have is something like this and we should be able to play, pause the video as we want. As you can see, I can hover on it and it just continues to play and that's still fine and i can make it a uh, full screen uh low screen and i can also check the thumbnails here the sh uh, short videos and all of them are playing when i hover on them so essentially what i want or what we want to achieve in this one is to get our content from a spring boot backend uh that will uh, actually allow us to be able to produce uh, or stream um, all our videos. Um, <clears throat> so if you're looking into uh, recreating a YouTube uh, clone or a Netflix, something like that, this is just a quick video run through of how Spring Boot delivers that. And then we'll also see how Angular um, would assist us in terms of uh, giving us the, the content. So let's look at the code. Uh, first things first, we are going to start on. We are going to start on the initializer as as usual. Um, so from the initializer, uh, we have our project is Maven. Uh, the language obviously be Java, and then we are on three point one point two. That's the latest stable that we have currently uh, as the recording uh, as the recording of this video. So the, I always recommend you get the latest. Um, latest one so uh the group artifact the metadata uh, is called the code uh, artifact is wetube uh instead of youtube wetube together you like and you subscribe together wetube <laughs> that was nice all right cool so continuing on that um so our packaging will be jar and then our uh, java version is 17 and uh, whichever one that you have on the um, uh, latest support um, versions, you can choose one that you feel comfortable with. That's still fine. Uh, and then few dependencies, not a lot. Uh, the most significant one is really the Spring Reactive uh, Web. Uh, so basically, we, with the Spring Reactive Web, we're able to use uh, web plugs, and uh, that's uh, that's what. Uh, essentially gives us the content uh, as a stream and it only gives us the bytes that we need instead of um, instead of the whole video or downloading the entire uh, file before uh, feeding it to you. So that's the same thing that happens on, um, on YouTube. Uh, as you watch a video, uh, when you're here, it's only going to download pieces of, uh, of the video as you go along so that the response time on the server is not really uh, so bad or the performance is is hindered in that way um, so essentially that's what happens here and that's what we are seeing it downloads chunks of the video as it goes um, so that's that and then it's Lombok and uh, Spring Boot uh, dev tools essentially those are just for us um, on scaffolding our code and uh, live reloads Okay, I think that's enough on the background. I'll share the link to this config if you want it. You can just uh, make use of that uh, or start boilerplating the code from here. And then uh, now we can move to our code. So in our code, it's not a lot. It's really a, a small project. So essentially, this is the uh, service where the stream service is the business logic. And in the business logic, what we have is a resource loader because we want to load a resource, which is a file. And that file can come from anywhere. Uh, in our situation, I've uh, added the file in uh, in my local machine. So I'm not using S3 bucket or AWS services or a database to, um, to fetch my content, but it's essentially the same idea. Uh, wherever you're fetching your file from, 
that will still work fine without any issues and if you uh, want to add that capability of uh, uploading and retrieving files i do have a spring boot um, video dedicated to uploading files and uh, retrieving files both a database video where you save on a database and retrieve and also uh, the aws s3 packet uh, video and I'll put the, uh, the links to put to these videos uh, on the description down below so that you're able to see how you can upload files and download files using Spring Boot. And when you come this side, you can then decide where your resource or where your content or your files are stored. And then you can retrieve them based on that particular uh, parameter that you have. Uh, it could be a unique identifier, could be title, could be uh, anything that you want then uh, it should uh, essentially give you um, all your videos and it will pretty much still use Webflux to stream that particular uh, video. It's just on, 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 on your side, the only heavy lifting is just to go retrieve the file and that's it. Um, but once it's, uh, once it's uh, retrieved and it's here, uh, then everything should be fine. So uh, enough of that talk. Um, and then we have a retrieve content uh, function. So the retrieve content, we're passing the string, uh, which is title, uh, which is the title of the uh, video. And the video that we, are, we have is uh, just demo.mp4. That's just one video that I have. And it's just a video of the clouds. Uh, as you can see here, just video of the clouds and nothing special. So, Essentially, that's what I have, and uh, you will see now. I'll show you now on uh, Angular side uh, um, where we we pass that. So, in our uh, function here, our method, uh, we have a mono, which is an IO uh, part of a dependency. So it's it's coming from the reactive stream, which is where. Um, all of the streaming like services come from and once we have the mono we want a resource and our resource we are going to get it from a supplier and our supplier is basically um, our local storage uh, and then we will pass in the from the resource loader we get the resource uh, which is in our local machine right here and then we pass the file which is class path content as you can see the video is on the content folder uh, even though you can't see it uh, on here because yeah spring tool suit it has that uh, so essentially i can see the video here but i can only see it on my um, file explorer essentially so then uh the file path i just i pass in the uh the class path and then the folder where it's in and then i just um apprehend that string format and then uh, uh, append that string format and the file uh, the file type then the title will just be re will replace that particular format there and then it should be sorted <coughs> it should be sorted okay so i think that's that's it this is the entire thing that controls getting the resource and streaming it and basically we're done from here it's logic to call this particular function and get the the content that we expect. So after this, it's now the controller and we basically create the REST controller and the request mapping is a stream. And on the streaming, we just uh, uh, add our, we inject our dependency here to the business logic, which is stream uh, service. Then for the stream service, we have uh, for the stream controller we have a get um, and then we're just passing in a um, a path variable here which is title nothing special so it's just a path variable and it produces a video of mp4 and then we just uh, have the the stream content method with our par uh, par parameter here uh, which is the path variable and we just say streaming uh, stream service dot retrieve content we pass in the title then it gives us back a mono resource which is a streaming um is a streaming um dependency so we basically getting back the video as a video 
and we send that back to the user and also this uh, particular endpoint you can also run it on postman and you get a video um, so I'll just show you now um, how that looks so essentially this is application everything is done this is nothing fancy for us to do um, you have a streaming service or you have a streaming backend that is set up and it's ready to go so now um, let's jump into uh, let's just check this in Postman quickly so that you can be able to see it. Let me just go to this API here and let's say uh, HTTP localhost 8080 stream and the title of the video is demo which is this one right here demo.mp4 and then uh, as you can see we sending that and the video is coming back. So voila, now we have a video, we can play the video and it downloads as it goes and we just uh, pause it and do whatever we want. So essentially that's what we have and the <clears throat> now we can move safely to the Angular side which is the front end so that we can see how we can make a replica of YouTube. Right, so let's go there and see that. Right, so obviously, engine you, uh, WeTube, and then we'll give you essentially this type of an Angular um, application. Uh, so everything is basically within the app module because there's nothing fancy that we're doing really. Uh, this just for it's an example purposes. So the very important part here is just this div right here because everything else follows that. So we have a video, which is this and the video source uh, is our API stream demo because that's the video that we want to check and because now you're able to uh, see that you can call this API with any video that you have on your storage and it should basically put that video um, on your on your um, on your tag here and then it should be able to display the way that you want and then um, uh, define the size of the uh, video and I then uh, add the controls, uh, preload is none. Then these are just uh, on mouse move, on mouse out, it pauses. So I just have these, as you can see, when I hover on the video, when I hover away, when I come back onto it, it plays, when I hover away, it pauses. So basically that's that. And if I do remove these, you will see that I would have to, uh, and for that one, it would actually be advisable to remove it. And then uh, page uh, reloads, let's just wait for it. All right, uh, now it's reloaded, and then I can play the video. So as I is as I click on this, it will make a call to the API, then it, it gets the stream, then it uh, loads everything else. So as I will have on this one, it will also, basically do the same thing uh, as you can see now it's doing that and it's all fine all right so basically that's that and um i think on our front end side it's really uh calling our api and to feed it to the video um tag and it should be fine then the rest is just regular html that you can also play around with and use so essentially I think this is just one idea of how you can recreate YouTube or a streaming uh, web application if you want. And for now, it's goodbye. Please do remember to like and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned for more videos like this.